So I saw some people in the comments uh, asking about, you know, when do you know what type of line weight to use? You can combine them in whatever way you want. This whole thing, we're, we're learning a visual language. Just like when you speak, everybody has a style that they speak in. Everyone has an accent that they speak in. And when you communicate visually, you have that same decision that you can make to kind of develop a speaking style. The approach here is to start learning this language just like babies learn how to speak. You know, they start babbling, they start making random noises, and then eventually they start making noises that kind of sound like the parents. And then those noises become words, and then those words become sentences, and then eventually they could speak. So it's gonna be the same way for you, where you, you kinda just have to allow yourself to make random noises and slowly turn those noises into really complex stories that you're telling through illustration. If you want way more lessons on line weight and the other fundamental drawing concepts, check out proco.com slash drawing. In the full course, you'll find all the extra lessons, demos, projects, warmups, and critique videos. Your support helps us make free videos like this one. That's at proga.com slash drawing. I'll show you how I think through combining all the methods. And the three methods that I'm gonna be thinking about are importance, the light direction, or shadows, and depth. So it's depth or form, three-dimensional stuff. And so sometimes things compete against each other. Like in order to show depth, in a drawing, you need to make the far away things lighter and the closer things heavier. But sometimes those closer things are inside of a form. So do you make those lighter or darker? Because usually we want the outer things to be lighter and sometimes the outer thing is on the edge that's far away. So it's like those are contradicting each other. Well, how do you make both of them work together? The good news is we have a lot of things to work with. We have the thickness of a line, we have the value of the line, sometimes we can make a line blurry. We can also just make one line taper, right? Like for example, I can have this line, right? Where this tapers, that goes from thin to thick. And then I can also have this line where it also tapers from thin to thick but the whole thing is thicker than this one. So they both taper, but on average, this one is heavier. So we're kind of combining two different things here for weight. This, they both shift in weight, but on average, this one is heavier. We can combine different methods within the same line. I could also make this whole line lighter in value, and then that'll drop it. And then I could, like for example, let's, let's do that. Let's make another line that's kind of thick overall but light, right? So this also tapers. It's equal in thickness to this one, but it's kind of also equal in overall heaviness to this one because this one's darker, but this one's thicker. So they're kind of equal, but in different ways, right? So I could choose to do this to show importance and I could do this to show shadows and light. And then I can use a taper across any of them to show depth, right? So that's one way. This is just one way that I'm like thinking through this and I can combine them all and just kind of see what happens. So let's start, let's do this with a, a box with a lid on it. So I'm gonna lightly sketch in a box and don't worry, you don't need to know how to draw a box. I'm just doing this to, to illustrate it for you because it's, it's a three dimensional thing. Definitely want some three-dimensionality in it so that we can think about some depth. Okay, so there's a box. It's very light for you right now, but I don't want to go too dark because I haven't really established where the shadows are or anything. So again, I'm, I'm going to go for dark values on areas where I'm thinking this is going to be shadow. Okay, let's pick where's the light. I'm going to go with at the top. That's pretty typical. And let's say the light's coming from the top and the right. So let's say the light source is kind of like this, okay? So that would mean that this plane, this whole area here is the darkest. That's facing away from the light the most. The top plane is pretty much being lit up by the, by the light, so that's gonna be the lightest. And this one's maybe, let's just say it's kind of a, a mid-tone. It's not being hit by the light as much as this one. So if I were to do a simple box to show you guys, you would have shadow here, mid-tone here, 
and then light at the top. And then you actually might have a little bit of a shadow at the bottom of the, the box where it touches the ground. Very, very sharp, very, very thin shadow, but still could be a little shadow to separate it. Okay, so that's kind of what I'm thinking of for my shadow. For the depth, these lines back here are the farthest. This is the closest, right? And then these points are kind of in the middle. The lines that are going away this way are going to taper. So they start really close and then as they go away, they'll get thinner, thinner, and then even here, even thinner. This is going to be the thinnest part. And then for importance, it's going to be outside important, inside less important. But I'm going to have to balance that with the fact that the inside stuff is actually closer to me. So that balance is going to be interesting. And actually, let's put a lid on this box as well, just so we have more elements in here to think about for like imp for importance and shadows. Lid is a little bit wider. So there's my box. I'm going to move on to a slightly darker pencil. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to establish the values of each line. I'm not going to try to make any of them thicker or thinner. It's kind of happening in some places just because I'm being a little sloppy, but so I've established that this whole side is going to be the shadow, so I'm going to make some dark lines in here. Okay, and this right here, this actually shares an edge between the shadow, the darkest spot, and the light, which is the lightest spot. So I don't know if I want to make this line as dark as the other ones. I'm actually just going to go in between because I want it to kind of feel like it's, you know, partially light, partially dark. Okay, and then this whole plane, more of a medium value line. And then this up here is going to be the lightest. So I'll just I'll actually just keep it the way it is already. So I've established the values of my line and now I'm going to work on the thicknesses and the tapers, but I'm going to try to stick to the value that I just established here. So every time I adjust the thickness of these lines, I'm going to try not to change the values. Okay, so I did this one already. Next one, let's actually go on to depth. Let's work on this one. So the closest thing is this whole edge. And then from this edge, everything goes away and then it goes away even more. So this should be pretty thick. Let's make that thick. Okay, so now this is at the moment the thickest line. These two are the thickest line in my drawing because they're really close. And then as they go away, I'm going to try to taper them to be thinner. I can also adjust my lines with an eraser with this. So now I could draw with this, taper it. So it starts thicker, becomes thinner. You can make your line weights as complicated as you want, or you can make them very simple. You could also just make them extremely minimal where the lines are not important at all. There, it's the same line weight throughout and your focus completely on communicating something else. Your style, your uniqueness comes through color or your shape design, whatever it is. This is just one tool. And the only way to really develop that voice is to just keep doing it, keep trying new things, keep exploring, see what sticks, what do you like? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so now all my tapers are set up. The next thing and the last thing left over is the importance. So I'm gonna go with the importance of like out is important, in less important big shapes to small shapes. So the outer shape, I'm gonna try to make more important than it is currently set up because I made the inner ones really important. So I'm just gonna go through pretty much all of the outer lines and thicken them up. Keeping the same value that I already established. 
This is a shadow side. And so with this line, I have to make it thicker, but making sure I keep that taper. So I can start th thicker and then end over here even thicker than that. So that might end up being the thickest part down here because this is really close. It's in shadow and it's at the outside. So that's probably going to be the very, very thickest my line can go. And then in here, it's just as thick, but a little bit lighter in value. Also getting the taper. So see how in here, I'm making it thicker because it's on the outside, but not nearly as dark as over here. And that's kind of creating a combination of these hierarchies. And then up here, it's also an outer form, but it's really light. I do not want to make it dark because then it's going to look like one, it's a shadow and two, that it maybe it's closer to me. So it's going to lose the depth and the light. So I'm going to try to make it thicker but keeping, and I think I might want to lighten it up with my kneaded eraser after this, because I'm kind of going over it so many times that it's making it. It's making it a little too dark. I also just now forgot about the taper, that this line also needs to have a taper to it, because it is going deep into space. So I'm gonna come back with this guy, bring that taper back in. It's a little bit lighter, but I think I made it just too close to the value of this. So I could take my kneaded eraser and just kind of blot at it. So that I'm not making it thinner. I'm just making the value lighter. And now another thing I can do is kind of blot out the middle of these planes right here. And so what that does is it's making the top plane feel like it's glowing, right? Cause it's kind of the light is like glowing from here. And then it's making this feel closer and then it's making the outside feel more important. So kind of blotting these middle parts out a little bit can kind of give that effect. That maybe is a little too much. Okay. And the last thing I want to do is just maybe come back in and accentuate any areas that I really want to pop in a little bit more. So this shadow, just a little darker, be a little thicker. Maybe even thicker in here. And again, like I'm really accentuating the contrast between the weight of all my lines. In a normal drawing, I would not go this bold with <laughs> the heavy lines. Like it's gonna be much more subtle. I just want to show you guys in a way that's very, very clear. So I'm exaggerating things quite a bit. But also you could do it like that. You could make it very exaggerated. It's just that, you know, in a drawing where the lines are very prominent, where they're like a main, main actor, it's going to make everything feel a little more graphic and less realistic. Because in reality, we don't really see lines and so, when you communicate more with line, you're making your drawing look less like a photograph or less like reality, which is totally fine. It doesn't need to look like reality. It's just that you got to keep that in mind that more you use line to communicate, the less your drawing will look realistic. So if you want to go for ultra realism where you just you want your thing to look exactly how it would as people would see it, then you try to use tone instead of line or you can use minimally line, very subtle. You could still apply all of these principles just with a much more subtle execution. Um, but yeah, pretty much this is it. This is, you can see like, I could feel that there's shadow here, everything's darker. I could feel depth because everything's kind of getting thinner as it goes away. And then outer overall is pretty thick. And then inner, we got a lot of thin stuff going on. So it's feeling a little bit less important. 
Yeah, and actually what I could do is this line in here, I could make it a little bit thinner as well since it doesn't really help us show depth with a taper. So I just want to make sure that that is a little bit thinner than this so that, you know, we got that outside in importance. So yeah, these outer lines are thicker than these inner lines, but there's a taper, so that's depth. You got importance and you got light and you got this glowing parts from here. So all three things combined into one line weight system, <laughs> right? <laughs> do I think about it this much in a drawing? No, I do not. I don't, you know, start uh, figure drawing thinking about the value, the thickness, the tapering of every single line and trying to make sure that every single one shows the shadow, the importance and the depth. That's way too much. What I do is I train and I practice things very focused on specifically learning line weight and then when I'm doing a, a, a drawing where I'm not specifically focused on line weight, I intuitively try to execute on it or if I'm you know, halfway through a drawing and I'm like, ah, oh, man, my line weight is kind of ugly. Then I'll think about it, be like, why is it ugly? Like, what, what do I do to improve it? And then I could maybe improve it. But where you want to be is in a place where you can start intuitively just making decisions where a lot of these things kind of like start to combine together in a way where, yeah, your lines kind of are thicker in the light or in the shadows and they're a little bit more heavy on the more important parts. And when they're going in into space, they're getting a little lighter, but they don't have to be perfectly systematized like this, right? But it is good to learn it this way. Thanks for watching. If you want to join the community learning drawing basics from scratch, or if you want to brush up on your fundamentals, come on down to proko.com slash drawing. You can follow the course for free or become a premium student for more lessons, demos, assignments, warmups, and critiques. Just in the line weight section alone, I have a demo focusing on the hierarchy of importance method, another on shadows, and another on using all three methods with this drawing of shoes. Right now, premium students are working on their line master studies, and I'm publishing my master study demos. This Jeff Watts skull shows off Jeff's incredible range of line quality, and I'll show you how I studied his drawings when I was a full-time student. I also did a drawing study from an inking by Robert De La Torre. Yes, you can study line quality from inks. In fact, I encourage it. All that and much more in the Drawing Basics course over at proko.com slash drawing. Thank you for your support. See you next time.